All right, hold on. So tonight is the Youth Advisory Board meeting, virtual Zoom meeting for April 1st, 2021. We are being recorded um, per governor's orders, um, executive orders, and um, Chair Dylan Knapp will call the meeting to order. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, right. Attendance of members. Awesome, it's 7.08 and right now I have Dylan Knapp, Eric Knapp, um, Sarah Briggs, Michelle Waterman, Patrick Tellman, Janice D. Roberts, Pam Harrison, Kathy Bagley, and myself, Erica Texera. Did I miss anybody? No? Okay. So I'll keep adding as people come in. All right. All yours, Dylan. Okay. Uh, attendance. Uh, attendance of members. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, approval of minutes. So we'll wait until we get a quorum. Sorry. Yeah, we'll just, we'll put that towards the end because we don't have enough people to, uh, to vote on anything. So we can move on to the next. Um, uh, financial report. Sure. So, um, so right now in our youth advisory board um, account, we have one thousand eight hundred and fifty nine dollars and sixty seven cents. So that's a thousand dollars more than we had last month because of the donation that Barbara Rue had um, brought down. Um, and I forget the what fund that was. Let me pull it up. The tax, Weathersfield's Taxpayers Association um, donated $1,000 for the Yavit scholarship, which goes into our Youth Advisory Board account. And um, in the campership, we were able to raise between the HUGS 5K, which was $865, and the uh, Puerto Vallarta fundraiser, which was $720 and $300 from the Taxpayers um, Association as well. So $1,885 will go towards right now the campership fund, which is awesome. Good work. Yeah, all good stuff. Very excited about it. It's getting warm out, so we're talking about camp. We're able to get, we have a couple of different uh, um, seniors that are applying for scholarships. So we'll get into all that in a second. So it's all back to you, Dylan. Okay, um, should we go to membership until we have a quorum? Oh, I already, call, yeah, I called out um, everybody that I have present on mine. Oh, membership. Uh, membership, I'm not attendance. I think he's talking about the membership and uh, line item number uh, six, I think it is. Uh, is that I, number? Where are we? I'm going off of the agenda. Yeah. Don't we have um, updates from us next? Yeah, I just didn't know if you wanted to wait until. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we don't have to vote on any updates, so we can have us go right into the updates. That's good. Uh, youth service, youth services report. We'll start off with Patrick. How about okay. that? Obviously, we're still not having access to the school, so none of the programs are running. I am, I am working with the scholarship. We have three applicants with the deadline coming up in April 11th, and that'll be immediately followed by the interview and selection process the following week. The three applicants are Connor Silbo, Zarin Nair, I believe is how you say her name, and Isabella Bonvacito. And we're giving them the deadline till the 11th to get any more in at the last minute. And then the following week, I'm gonna make copies of all the applications to get them out to all the committee members and hopefully do Zoom interviews all in one night, is the hope to schedule them for. So I will get everything out to the, the uh, interview committee next week. Did you pick a date on the uh, Patrick? I don't recall. I don't remember. 
we 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 we're basically doing everything just push everything back a month so i put down monday tuesday wednesday the following week but when i actually call the kids to schedule it i'm going to try to schedule them all back to back on one night if i can gotcha do you have you have a group patrick that's doing the interviews with you all set i've had a few volunteers yes oh perfect okay awesome I just don't remember who they are off the top of my head because it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, Janice, I know. Eric, were you on that committee? I think I put my name in the hat for this year, too. I think so, too. And I think Colleen was the other one that I had on. Who was the first one you mentioned? Janice. Oh, okay. Because I think Barb Bellis has typically done it last few years. I don't know if she's interested this year or not. but Okay, so we have four. That's still good. Yeah. So in case anybody can't make it, you know, three is still a good number, but four is great too. Sounds good. All right. So that's basically where we're at right now. Any updates for the summer stuff for camp, Patrick and Kathy, just to give a, a little snapshot for the group? Well, I can speak for the Nature Center. We are sure. doing 40 kids this year in groups of 10 with two counselors each as opposed to doing what we used to do with 80 in the past, along with 12 CIT. So we'd have 92, technically 92 campers at camp. We're not able to do CITs because the basis of that whole program is working with everybody and getting experience. And this year we really can't have them jumping around between groups, which is kind of the basis of the program. And plus they're at an age where they don't need the childcare. We need those slots for kids that'll actually be needing a childcare service. So we're going with 40 kids that way we have indoor space for four rooms with 10 kids in each room. Otherwise it just gets overwhelming with 80 kids in that building. If you're out there in the middle of summer when there's 80 kids in the building, it's hot and wet and sticky and miserable in the building. So we're gonna cut it to 40 kids. That way there's enough room for indoor sedentary activities. Nothing, we're not playing games or anything, but indoor space for sedentary activities if there is bad weather. And obviously the staff will be cut in half at the same time. And we are working on putting up a pavilion behind the nature center. We've started fundraising for that. We're hoping to raise between 20 and maybe up to $50,000. We're well on our way right now. And we hopefully, if everything goes okay, we might be able to get it up for the summer, although I'm not counting on that at all. But certainly by next summer, we should have the pavilion out there. So we'll have a little more sheltered space. That's awesome. Yeah. You, and that's 40 slots each session, right? Um, Correct. Now, so how many different sessions are there through the summer? We're, we're doing nine weeks this year. So that's basically nine sessions, right? Right. We're starting the day after school ends and we're not going being done till August 13th. Perfect. So that's 40 each, uh, each one of those sessions. Which There's two holidays there because Monday's the last day of school. So we're not running Monday and Monday, July 5th is the 4th of July holiday. Other than that, we're straight through. Perfect. And yeah, that's really exciting about getting the pavilion up at the, at the nature center, um, right behind there. Um, we had a, we have a, a fund through youth services, the, uh, Salter Memorial Fund from the Hartford Foundation that someone, um, left as a, a, a fund that they give us, um, annually, mm -hmm. um, it, it grows, um, interest. So, we were able to use some of the money we have in there because it has to go towards geared towards uh, youth um, positive uh, initiatives for youth. And we were able to put it towards um, uh, trying to help out funding the pavilion at the nature center, which is awesome because we knew that that'll get a lot of use by youth that go to camp there. Is that the same grant you were telling me about, Kathy? Okay. Yeah, it's through, uh, it's someone left it through youth services and like each year we have like a, an X amount of money to spend because of like the money that it, it, the interests and stuff like that through the Hartford Foundation and how they invest it. And uh, we had a little bit of a kiddie pool of about a little under $5,000, right, Kathy, that we were able to put towards the pavilion, which is awesome. And the, the Friends Committee has literally money rolling in every day. My That's mailbox awesome. is getting four and five checks a day for the last probably week and a half. I'm just curious to see how much they've got already because we I had originally picked the pavilion that was about $50,000. It was a very nice way overkill, but I was using that picture as a, a, a guideline. But then we were out at uh, 
the place out in Ellington. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Oh yeah, the farm place. Clover yeah, Clover Farms. Clover Farms. Farms. And we saw one that was very acceptable to me for about twenty thousand. So I said, well, let's let's do a cost saving because the one I picked out was really, really nice. It was like overkill for what the park probably wants. But the one we the one we saw was like very nice, looked like it had a, looked like it belonged in a park. So, as opposed to somebody's backyard that had a nice pool around it and kind of thing. So, it's a little bit it's quite a bit of cost saving, but it's still it'll meet, it'll meet our needs and still look decent in the park. That's great. So we're well on our way to getting that one funded. And that's um, the nature center camps are always a camp that we're able to give scholarships out to. Yeah. Um, it's really enjoy going so. Yeah. And it'll, um, it'll, nice be a shade, it'll be a shade structure on those hot days because my staff are putting up all those pop-up tents day in day out and you know wind kicks up they're getting blown over or anything so and they're taking them down every day and they're breaking so that'll be a shade structure on hot days and it'll also be an outdoor place to go if it's raining and we're not cramped in the building we can put 10 20 kids outside still do activity under the shelter and it's available for weekends and possibly doing like picnic rentals or something like that great it's gonna be there for good so Perfect. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate yep. it. Kathy, are you good or did you want to add anything about camp? No, I would just say that staff are planning a lot of different summer uh, programs, the camps, the pools. Some of it might be contingent on the budget, but we're moving forward with those plannings. And as Patrick said, part of the guidelines is that we do have to reduce the number of children that we take based on how many children we can put inside if we should get rain. So that's something we're looking at. So our hope is to get the brochure, the summer brochure out, probably the middle of um, April, down around that time with registration in early May. Awesome. Um, and with that being, the pools being part of that, right, Kathy? Yes. Where you're aiming for both pools to be open this summer. <laughs> And That's the plan. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, great. All right, Michelle, did you want to add anything? I know that the middle school's been contacting you and you've been keeping up with them a little bit too, right? Yes. Um, they have no, no recent referrals, just more or less consult, consulting for the cases that we have. Mm -hmm. We have a total of 17 cases for this year between 20 and 21. That we had some carry so a lot of yep a lot of follow-up not a lot of new and it's been really quiet so just more or less referral based parents reaching out for clinical supports because some of the kids have an anxiety in the schools some of the kids are having not really behavior issues but COVID is has taken a toll on the kids so yeah. between virtual and in-person learning and the engagement yeah. well yeah and the behavior changes at home mm -hmm. Are a significant factor. All right. Really? Um, anything else you want to add, Michelle? No. No, you got all right. Perfect. Um, okay, I guess that goes to me next. Um, just quickly so I don't take up too much time. Um, so really excited about the fundraisers that we were able to kind of get in some money to, to get our campership going, which is awesome for this year. Um, so we're gonna start doing camperships very soon. We're just trying to work out all the details of how we're gonna make all the logistics work this year, but we'll uh, we'll get that all down soon and um, people will be, begin to start registering as soon as um, you know registration opens for park and rec and if they wanna go outside of town to certain um, camps as well. Um, we are currently still, you know, um, very busy with our food bank and our weekend meal programs, um, which is great. Um, and there's in this uh, community is still very supportive with donating um, food, uh, toiletries, um, uh, tons of items, monetary donations. So it's really keeping us um, able to give a lot out back out to the community, which is awesome. Um, we are still doing energy assistance, um, which is coming in very handy for folks this year. Still navigating and working with people who are maybe on unemployment or suffering with 
um, either COVID issues, financial issues due to COVID or health issues. Um, yeah, so those are all referrals that continue to come into social services and senior services. Um, I just, I know this doesn't really fall into youth, but uh, the senior center has done a wonderful job um, here in town coordinating vaccine clinics. We have done a bunch of them through February and March. Right now we're done with all the first round of uh, COVID vaccine clinics and we're into just wrapping up um, second shots in April. So we're really excited. We, um, we got great turnouts and we were able to really meet the needs of the most vulnerable um, residents in town. Um, many being the senior citizens who fall into that category. So we're really excited about that. And uh, thank you to the partnership with the health district because and the senior center and park and rec and social news service staff because it really just went smoothly and everyone in town who were, was able to go was really um, appreciative of having it locally here. So thank you for everyone with that. Um, in terms of our drug Hello. communities grant, um, I'm excited to say that we posted the position for uh, the prevention coordinator and it actually closed today. So we will be doing, um, looking at those applications and doing interviews um, starting hopefully the end of next week, beginning of the following week, which is awesome. Bonnie um, Smith, who is our evaluator, who has worked on with us in doing um, our youth needs assessment surveys and has been critical in us helping us prepare and, and write up parts of the drug free communities grant has worked with other communities that have received the grant. She is going to be part of the interview process, which is awesome. Um, so we'll get a lot of direction from there. So we're looking forward that's moving along. Um, we just had a week training of um, coalition building where we have to, part of the grant, we have to be part of a cohort that does um, a coalition building academy. So we did week one already. We have two more weeks with some other trainings mixed in between. Sarah Briggs from the library was awesome in joining me for part of that week. Um, we would have had our prevention coordinator if they were on board be part of it. They will be part of it going forward, whoever we hire, but Sarah from um, the library it was awesome and joined me for a good portion of the week, which was phenomenal. And we got to um, do some team building stuff, talk about the coalition and how we can better improve on stuff. So from that, I just wanna take time to mention that um, looks like we're in really good shape compared to other communities too. So really excited about that. We have a lot of data. We have a lot of great stuff going on and a lot of great stuff we have potential to do once we have our core, uh, prevention coordinator on board. Um, Bonnie, now that we have a little more direction of what we kind of need for this you know, coalition building, Bonnie will do some of that work with us as our evaluator. So um, the goal is for May and June's meeting to do some of this um, evaluation of our coalition and what we are gonna look to target going forward. So I just want you guys to come prepared for May and June's meeting that we will be focusing on stuff with Bonnie and on the grant and kind of doing like self assessments um, and going and making some like strategic goals out of all that, which is awesome. Um, so I look forward to that. Um, Sarah, did you want to add anything about participating in some of that work with me? You don't have to. I just thought I'd give just you a say thank you. I mean, it was just, you know, it was very organized and um, it, it was good. I liked the mix of, um, I like the way they scheduled it where we had a mix of instruction and then breakouts and then instruction again. So that was very helpful. And yeah. uh, thank you to Erica for all the organization and for getting us involved in it. Yeah, no, it was great. It was fun. They were good presenters, so they kept. They were, yeah, yeah. Um, the so we're looking for the laugh and the music track. <laughs> yes, yeah, they yeah. were awesome. It was, it's a, it was a virtual training. Um, but if it wasn't, it probably, I think it, we would have been the Lake Tahoe group, which was like, wish we were in Lake Tahoe, but we had a nice background <laughs> of Lake Tahoe. Maybe next time. Really, yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> Um, but it was it was definitely a really good training. I look forward to us being part of the next couple of weeks um, that will take place over the next. We have two more weeks, which will take place in like June, and I believe the last the one after that's in August. And then we have uh, some um, 
some packets and some information we have to complete before we graduate as a coalition in the fall, which is awesome. So we'll have another, you know, title under our belt as a coalition, which is great. Um, so like I said, Bonnie's going to help us do a lot of that evaluation. We'll probably end up seeing if we can do another round of surveying in the fall of 2021, because that'll actually be two years since the last one. Um, so we'll get started working on that. Um, and uh, that's where the next two meetings will kind of lead us. Um, Eric, I did have a question for you because when we were talking at um, this Coalition Academy, um, I know the drug take back event is coming up in April that the PDs do across the nation. Do you ever, are you ever part of that? Uh, I'm not, the DEA kind of runs it on their own. Uh, I think they just kind of use our facility. We used to work it with them. And I think that we haven't done that for quite a few years, unless somebody's just doing it and it's not really publicized, I guess. Okay. Cause some towns do it and some communities do big events around it. Um, so they have it usually twice a year, once in April, the end of April and once October, maybe um, end of October. So I was just wondering if you by any chance would be able to like look into the PD and see if we could do anything as part of our youth advisory board um, around that event to kind of get it advertised and get it out there that people can drop off, you know, any um, medications that they have and kind of give it a big, um, you know, outreach this year to kind of make an effort to show that we're there and that we're really looking for people to do that. I just don't know how the PD feels about that, but I don't, now that you're, you're our liaison for the PD, maybe you can ask them what we could be part of. Absolutely. I'm typing an email as we speak. I'll see if we can uh, we can do something. Um, beyond us advertising on our Facebook page, I'm not sure what else we've done in the past. What else would you like to do? Sky's the limit for the group. I know, I know that we're in COVID, so obviously we have to just be cautious. I know like Rocky Hill, I was trying to, I was asking around after I heard, you know, other communities doing stuff. Rocky Hill will do like a huge event where they actually have like um, like tents put outside and officers and kind of like more of like a, a kind of event for the community, like meet and greet. They give out little like, you know, goodies, uh, little like, um, you know, tchotchkes kind of with like coalition stuff on it. So I'm just thinking we could do something like that, have it like in the morning where we could have some coalition members, uh, youth advisory board members, just trying to maybe give out, disseminate information, but also let them know that we're out there and that we have this grant. Sky's the limit, kind of. Okay, very good. I'll uh, I'll check with my boss. Maybe we can reach out to Rocky Hill and get on the specifics on how they run it. Is it always okay. the same day? Does everybody do it the same day? Yeah, and it's on a weekend. It's yep. always on a Saturday. Yeah, it's always a Saturday, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll start the process and we'll go from there. Perfect, awesome. This is exactly what they talked about, right, Sarah, in our coalition, how to tap into the resources. Um, it is, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll pass, uh, if we get any information from Eric, I'll pass it around to the group to see who's interested in getting involved in something like that. Um, I'm trying to think, anything else that I'm missing? I think that's it for me. I think I can be quiet now. <laughs> um, and then I do want to pass it on to like Pam and Eric and Dylan or anybody else who would like to share what's going on at uh, kind of in the schools that they're seeing. Um, and then also if Sarah would like to give us an update um, regarding what the library is doing currently. Dylan, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, it's actually kind of nice having everyone back in school. It's a lot packed, um, parking lots are full, which is kind of tough. I was almost late one day <laughs> with the long line, but um, and the damn cops are making everybody stop at the stop sign too. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, everyone's following the rules. Um, it's weird because I used to have like one or two kids in all my classes and now they're all like full. <laughs> so that's nice, but um, I don't know, I'm enjoying it. Talk about uh, sports. Is uh, people being able to play sports again? Is that relieving some people's stress and stuff? Or um, well, I I I don't really see a change in what I've been doing with sports because even if you were at home, you're still you're still at your sport kind of so. 
it's just kind of been the same for me. It's been fantastic. <laughs> um, we, I think we capped out around 700 students this week, which was awesome compared to, you know, 80 back in January. <laughs> um, so, but to feed off of Eric's point, um, I had the opportunity to go down to the weight room at one point one day after school. And it was just so great to see the camaraderie of the kids um, all just hanging out together you know, masks on, doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but it was just great to see and, you know, walking out to my car in the afternoon and seeing, you know, tennis practice happening. It, it just, it's starting to feel normal. It, it's really kind of awesome. Um, but yes, there's a, an incredible uptick with um, mental health concerns and some of the kids coming back and just really not having been, you know, really in the building since last March and really not with a lot of people since last March. Um, so the counseling suite is busy. Um, but you know, it's the, it, it's, it's worth it. It's great having all the kids back. Oh, and summer programming. Um, it looks like summer, the board of ed is, will be offering a pretty extensive, uh, summer school opportunities, um, K to 12, um, from enrichment kind of fun skill building kind of activities, you know, some in person, some online, some an hour a day, some a week long, you know, it's really going to be like a gamut of opportunities with high school being offered the ability for some credit recovery, which I think is going to be necessary for a lot of kids if they want to choose to, you know, avail themselves to it. That's awesome to hear. Or is this going to be, are some of these um, programs going to be open to just kids that can, and parents that want to sign up on their own, or does it have to be kind of referred by a teacher or administrator oh, no. to this. No, no, it's going to be open to everyone and free. Okay. I think it's, I, I'm assuming it's something that uh, the town is using their COVID money for. You know, I know that you know, a lot of money came into the into the town for a yeah. variety of different things. I think that's what the Board of Ed is doing with a chunk of it. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Good to hear. Um, Sarah, did you want to add anything about the library? Sure. Uh, we don't, you know, it's the same hours. There aren't too many updates from the library. What we're doing this month for, well, in the month of April for youth is we're actually having a piggy bank pageant, which I'm kind of excited about for um, financial literacy week, money smart week. And the idea is, so I have a bunch of blank, just ceramic plain piggy banks and the teens can come pick them up, decorate them however they want, and then submit um, a photo to us and we'll post it on social media and email it around for some votes and whoever gets the most votes for their piggy will get an Amazon gift card. So kind of That's excited terrible. to do something, to do something fun. Um, we're in the midst of planning for summer reading. So I've been talking with the schools and so far what I think it's going to do is I think it's going to be pretty similar to last year where the kids will sign up via a Google form and um, we'll be mailing out gift cards and doing raffles that way. So we just don't really want to plan on in-person programs and then have to kind of cancel. I think it's going to be kind of more of the same for the next couple of months and then hopefully we can go from there. Great. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Janice, did you want to add anything? Any updates that you want to share? Any questions you had? No. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get a quorum tonight to do any of the voting stuff. I would say probably no, <laughs> but um, we can just wrap, kind of finish up our meeting and then um, I'll send out an email to the group um, about May's meeting and how we're looking to do some work with um, Bonnie on some of our drug-free community stuff. And hopefully maybe we'll have a, a hired person for our prevention coordinator that we can um, definitely introduce their name at least or who they are, <laughs> um, if not them themselves as well. Um, I, we can, we can move forward, Dylan, with uh, the next items. Eric, okay. yeah, sorry, um, who is that? Kathy. Oh yeah. 
just a quick, um, do you want to mention the, just a reminder about the Mother's Day cards? Oh, yes, yes. Um, I think most, might, many of you might have saw this on uh, our Facebook. Colleen kind of posted it and maybe other places. Joanne Huffman, is that, am I saying yep. her name? Yeah, that's, um, she works with the school system and with Park and Rec and was looking to do something to give back. And she is quite the artist. And um, she actually thought of a great idea that you can register on Park and Rec right now. And um, you can uh, register to buy one of her, um, she's making homemade Mother Day, Mother's Day cards with her own artwork on it. Um, and it's selling on um, Parks and Rec page for all the donations to go to our campership fund. So it's a fundraiser for our campership. So I, um, I ask that all of you take a look at Park and Rec and kind of see if you're interested in buying some homemade Mother's Day cards with uh, unique um, and personalized artwork and um, all the proceeds um, she's, she's doing it just to give back to the community is all going to go to our campership fund, which is awesome. So I know you guys, I think, did you guys see that on our our page. Okay, good. Yeah, because uh, Colleen said she was going to post it, but we'll maybe um, have her send out another. I'll put it on my um, to do to have her send out another blast out so that people can see it. Um, as the, I think the deadline is April sixth. Yes. Yeah. To to buy the card so that she has time to make them for you and get them to you before Mother's Day. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy, for reminding me. Okay. All right, Dylan. All yours. Um, uh, membership. So we do have one vacancy um, for a youth spot. Um, I know we have, um, so I wasn't sure, I don't know if Pam, you might, if you wanted to, I reached, I, I reached out to Christian to see if he was still interested about coming. I don't know if he was really interested in joining as a, as a, like a youth representative on our membership board. I don't know if you feel comfortable asking him or you think I, I should. Do. I do. I will. Okay. I'll reach out to him. I, I know he had some interest um, early on. So I just don't want to like, kind of just say, you know, think that we forgot about that. Okay. Um, there, we have had another interest, um, so I'd really like to get that position filled so we can uh, go into like the new fall with having both um, with two youth on our board filled right from the get go. And then um, all of our other members, um, I'll take a look, but we've everyone's been pretty good with coming to meetings and stuff, which has been great. That's, I guess, why we've been so successful at some of the initiatives we have kind of put out there. And um, the only other thing that I really wanted to maybe touch upon for tonight, since we already kind of really talked about the Yabbit scholarships, is we talked about wanting to do some type of volunteer recognition event. I don't know where everyone feels about that or if we had any ideas that came up that we wanna kind of pursue. Um, I know that we obviously don't have a lot of members here tonight, um, but we, if, does anybody on the call, did you guys give it some thought or have any ideas that we wanna like, maybe you wanna like put in an email and throw out to the group? It seemed like we had a few ideas, um, but there was no consensus um, about what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, people did seem to like the idea that, um, I think, I, unless I'm remembering it wrong, um, of having the kids um, thank somebody mm -hmm. um, instead. Um, so I don't know if that was instead or in addition to. Um, and then just the idea that they are, they may have had a lot of opportunities um, that they didn't expect during COVID, helping hand out food or whatever. But um, so, but I don't think that there was a consensus. There were a few ideas. Yes, thank you.
Anybody else want to share any ideas or thoughts? I think after I kind of put an idea out to you, Erica, that we kind of shared, um, I just want to be cognizant of our teachers, um, especially in the elementary schools. They are really overloaded right now, trying to continue to manage, you know, a class of, you know, 15, 18 kids in front of them and then two or three at home because, you know, they don't have a hundred percent return. Um, and kind of asking them to do one more thing. Um, even, even in the spirit of, you know, community service and building our community, I just, I just worry about that. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. That makes sense. Anybody else? I mean, I want, I definitely want to be mindful if, you know, I don't want to put extra work on anyone, especially at the end of the school year, because I know that how crazy that is in general. So um, just with COVID, I'm sure it gets even more crazy. So we can keep thinking about it. I mean, we obviously know right now it's not a good idea to have a room full of like, you know, 150 people, especially a lot of them being youth. Um, all together. So we can keep thinking about it. And then, you know, if anybody, I, I really encourage everyone to kind of just share any ideas that come up with like, um, with the emails, the email that we have for everybody and um, get some dialogue going. Um, and we can always revisit it come the, the May, the May meeting um, and go from there. We'll definitely acknowledge the Yabbit, you know, um, recipient. Um, and we'll we'll make that a big deal as well. Um, does anybody want to add anything? We're good. Did anybody want to add anything else that we didn't bring up in the meeting or had anything else they wanted to share? If not, we can definitely try to end the meeting um, by eight o'clock, definitely. <laughs> and get you guys all ready for your uh, long weekend, holiday weekend. Good. All right, Dylan, you can do you want to say anything or we can wait? No, we don't have to make a motion to adjourn, right? Because we don't have enough people to do a quorum, Kathy. Right. But we could just have the chair end the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming. Um, thank you. Have a good night. Have a yes, good night, everyone. Good night. Have a great weekend. Have a good long weekend. You guys. too. And we'll see everyone in May. Thank you. Sounds okay. good. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.